previous tutorials have all dealt with isolated particles. In this tutorial, we'll look at aligning and averaging subunits, which repeat along a filament axis. Specifically, we'll look at a 15 protofilament helical microtubule, which has been decorated with egg 5 motor domains. The dataset and sample peak projects used in this tutorial can be downloaded from the URL shown on your screen. If I open the sample dataset, you can see that the tomogram contains an almost straight microtubule running diagonally across the screen. Zooming in, you can see the egg 5 decorations protruding from the wall of the microtubule. And if I scroll up, you'll notice that the individual protofilaments running along the microtubule wall are clearly visible. The egg 5 protein decorates beta tubulin subunits, which occur every 8 nanometers along each protofilament. As a result, we've placed model points, shown in blue, every 8 nanometers along the center of the microtubule. Adding this many model points by hand would be both tedious and inaccurate, so Pete provides a program called Add Mod Points to assist with this process. I'll reopen the tomogram with a different model named AMP example to illustrate how this works. In this model, you can see that I've added enough points to define the path of the microtubule. In fact, because this particular microtubule is quite straight, even fewer points could have been used. Looking at the man page for add mod points, you can see that we'll need to specify the desired interval between points as an integer number of voxels. Using the imod command header, we can see that the voxel spacing for this volume is 9.06 angstroms per voxel. Since we'd like points approximately every 8 nanometers, I'll run add mod points specifying an interval of 9 voxels between points. Add mod points creates an output model with points added appended to the original model name. If I open the resulting model on our volume, you can see that the points have been added as requested. Settings for an initial alignment have been placed in project series 48 micrometer in directory first search, so let's open this project and take a look at those settings. Because the microtubule has a defined axis, I've selected particle model points for the particle y-axis. This means that the y-axis will be defined locally for each particle as the vector between neighboring model points. Given that this microtubule is quite straight, I could also have selected endpoints of contour, which would use the same y-axis for all the points in a contour. We'd like the initial motive list to align each particle's y-axis to that of the reference. This can be accomplished by selecting aligned particle y-axes. In this case, I've selected random axial rotations. This tells Pete to additionally apply a random axial rotation to each particle after aligning the y-axis with that of the reference. This helps minimize reinforcement of missing wedge artifacts and associated biases. I've picked a reference particle near the center of the microtubule, enabled missing wedge compensation and specified the tilt range, and have requested a cylindrical mask. We'll verify the mask dimensions and orientation shortly. On the Run tab, you can see that at the first iteration, I've specified a limited range 24 degree search about the microtubule axis only. This is appropriate for a 15 protofilament microtubule with helical symmetry. Of course, with an unknown structure, you may have to try multiple search strategies and point spacings before finding an appropriate one. At subsequent iterations, I have used the recommended 3 to 1 ratio between max and step for each angle. I've also enabled duplicate removal with thresholds of 1 voxel and 1 degree. Duplicate removal is recommended when using add mod points or when there's a risk of locking on to neighboring points. I've requested that the final averages be rotated to have their y-axis vertical rather than along the direction of the reference's y-axis. Finally, I've also selected strict search limit checking. With this option, no particle will be allowed to rotate more than plus or minus 12 degrees in phi from its original position, since that's the largest max specified for phi. If this option is not checked, particles could rotate up to the sum of the max values at the current and all previous iterations. Similar considerations apply to the other angles and to translational shifts. 
I've already run this alignment, so we can open the resulting references and verify that the mask is appropriately sized and positioned. Looking at the resulting averages, you'll notice that the microtubule axis is vertical, as we requested. Additionally, you can see that despite the steps we've taken to minimize bias, there is still some smearing from missing wedge artifacts, particularly when low numbers of particles are averaged. These artifacts are reduced when using all the available particles. Similarly, if I open a slicer window and we look down the microtubule axis at a 10 slice thick section, you'll see that the resulting average appears nearly isotropic with all 242 particles, but the lateral smearing is visible when using just 100 particles. This smearing would have been considerably worse had we not selected random axial rotations in the initial motive list. As before, we can run CalcFSC and then PlotFSC to get an estimate of the resolution achieved, and you'll see that we have a resolution of approximately 4.2 nanometers at the 50% response point. These averages suffice to verify that this is a 15 protofilament microtubule. Here's an illustration of this structure overlaid on our current average. The egg 5 decorated beta tubulin subunits are visible as the prominent spikes sticking out from the cylindrical core. Notice that there is a 24 degree axial rotation between neighboring spikes as well as a vertical displacement of 16 nanometers divided by 15. 15 protofilament microtubules are helical and we expect each of the 15 spikes making up one helical turn to be identical. We can use this symmetry to improve our averages. Recall that we requested our averages be aligned vertically. This will be useful during symmetrization since axial rotations can be implemented as simple rotations around the y-axis. Vertical alignment is done only during final averaging, however, and as a result will not be reflected in the final motive list. The motive list angles reflect only the rotations required to align each particle to match the orientation of the reference we'll need to apply an additional rotation to recover the desired vertical alignment. The necessary angles are listed in the finish.log file, so I'll open this file in a text editor, and we'll search for the word slicer, which will take me to a line containing the required angles. Making note of these, let's go up to directory full 15-fold, where we'll do the symmetrization and where I've created a shell script, reorient.sh, to perform the necessary operations. As before, we'll use program modify motive list to generate the new initial motive lists. First, we apply the slicer angles just noted to the final motive list created by the previous alignment. This creates an output motive list, vertical.csv, in which each particle will be rotated to have the local microtubule axis along the tomogram y-axis. Next, we repeatedly apply modify motive list to vertical.csv, each time rotating by increasing multiples of 24 degrees and shifting downward by increasing multiples of 16 fifteenths of a nanometer to generate motive lists vertical 1 through vertical 14. I could have iteratively generated vertical n plus 1 from vertical n by always rotating 24 degrees and shifting 16 fifteenths of a nanometer. This is less accurate, however, since it requires multiple interpolations and allows accumulation of errors. To perform the symmetrization using project full 15-fold, I've now specified user-supplied CSV files and have listed the input volume and model 15 times, five of which you see here, each time referring to one of our newly generated motive lists. On the Run tab, I've increased the reference thresholds and the number of particles to average 15-fold. Opening the symmetrized averages, we see that smearing from missing wedge bias is now further reduced, and the resulting averages are nearly symmetrical. Fourier shell correlation also indicates improved resolution and now shows 50% response at around 3.4 nanometers. Symmetrization such as this is of course not applicable in all cases. 
You may well wonder if something more general can't be done to reduce missing wedge artifacts and speed up the initial alignment search for both helical and non-helical microtubules. Indeed it can. Recall that in this data set, the individual protofilaments were visible and could be traced along the surface of the microtubule. We can exploit this information to determine the microtubule twist and to generate initial motive lists using a program called mod twist to em I've created a sample model to show you how this works. This model contains two objects. Object 1 points, shown in green, are placed as before at the center of the microtubule. Object 2 points, in cyan, are placed on the surface along protofilaments. Contours and points in objects 1 and 2 are an exact one-to-one -one correspondence, with each contour representing the length over which we can trace a specific protofilament. If I zoom in, you can see, for example, that in object 2, contour 1, points 1, 2, 3, and 4 trace the path of a particular protofilament. Contour 2 traces the position of another protofilament, starting at the same axial position as the last point in contour 1, and then so on for contour 3 and later contours. The single point overlap between contours is required to determine the difference in rotation angle between successive protofilaments. As before, we'd really like points every 8 nanometers and can accomplish this using add mod points, this time with a trailing T option indicating a model designed for use with mod twist to EM. After running add mod points, additional points will have been added as requested maintaining the one-to-one -one correspondence between objects 1 and 2 required by mod twist to em If I now run mod twist to em choosing a particle near the center of the microtubule as the reference, you can see that we've created two output files. An initial motive list whose name identifies the number of the reference particle used, and a new model whose name includes the tag twisted. You're free to rename these files, and in fact I'd recommend it so as to make their purpose more obvious. The single point overlap between adjacent contours is no longer needed at this point, and will have been removed from the output files. Both objects 1 and 2 will still be present in the new model. This causes no difficulty for Pete, however, since it processes only particles in object 1 during alignment and averaging. So we could now proceed with an alignment using this initial motive list and model as the starting point. Mod twist to EM is typical of a PEAT program which generates an initial motive list for a specific case. Let me briefly mention two others which also ship with PEAT. Stalkinit works with isolated particles which nevertheless have a preferred axis, for example bacteriophage or fatty acid synthase. Similarly, spikenid is intended for use with spikes protruding from a spherical or cylindrical surface. For example, retrovirus spikes or tobacco mosaic virus code protein. So now you've seen several examples of how to align and average subunits which repeat along a filament. Additionally, you've seen how to create initial motive lists for some common situations.